Nick Cannon mornings on Power 106. It's time for up close and personal conversations. Yes, close conversations with people that I admire, people that are doing amazing things and just true fixtures in the game. And this young lady is all of the above and so much more. I'm in the presence of a queen and uh, someone that I just recently had the opportunity of working with. So I'm excited to have this conversation with her. the world renowned, the wonderful it's Layla Ali. How you doing? I'm good. What's up? Chilling, chilling. So, good. I mean, we just did the mass Singer. <laughs> uh, that was fun. You was rocking as the panda. And then uh, we're here to talk about so much. You came bearing gifts. I got the the, the Layla Ali spice blends. I don't cook, but uh, I, I think I could probably put this to use in some kind of way. It's going, Look, I got somebody, some seasoning salt here, but I, I know how to use that. Yes, if you don't cook, I know somebody's cooking for you. Absolutely. Okay, so you go ahead and just put them in the kitchen. Whoever uses them is going to love them. They're organic spice blends, and they are amazing, so you got to try them. That's dope. So I've never seen somebody like with their own spices. How'd you get into that world? Well, you know, I have a cookbook, maybe you don't know, but I have a cookbook called Food for Life. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, and then I've also competed on Chopped and won yeah. and just been in the food space for a while. Yeah. So I'm very passionate about healthy cooking, but yeah. food that's nutritious and delicious. Yeah. So, you know, people are always using spices that have a lot of chemicals and things in them. And you think about sprinkling that's... that on your food every day, it's going to yeah. add up. It's not good. So yeah. that's why I came up with my organic spice blends. Nah, that's yeah. dope. So that... they're available at uh, leilali.com and on Amazon. Oh, definitely. So I would definitely be putting these to use, especially the season and salt. So oh, you're yeah. about to take Lowry's out of business. Yeah, look, that's so much better. And that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking about. Like, I was like, man, people are using this these chemicals that yeah. are, aren't good for you. So, right. But yeah, Indeed. taste it. I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. When mm. you when you try it, you let me know what you so think. So no more Lowry's. It's now Layla. That's <laughs> you're not going to want it anymore. Hey. <laughs> so tell me about Homemade Simple. So I host Homemade Simple, which comes on OWN every Saturday. And we go into people's homes and we give them amazing makeovers. So I'm the host and then I come in with a designer and a carpenter and it's just for the day. So it could be a mom who's taken in five foster kids and beat cancer and she right. needs a, a, a retreat. So we'll redo her bedroom. You know, yeah. there's a lot of times people who are always giving are very selfless and don't right. have anything done for them. And there's a lot of DIY projects that are available on HomemadeSimple.com. And I get in, the in there and I cook with the families from yeah. my cookbook, Food for Life. I gift them with my spices. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun so as you know right i started off boxing yes we um, all know yeah yeah i retired <laughs> in 2007 right but i've always been an entrepreneur you know i had a nail salon before i started boxing and i've kind of gotten back to that and my passion now is just about encouraging people to be their best absolute self through nutrition and wellness and all of that so right so obviously like you said from athlete to entrepreneur to mogul to just someone who's a, a philanthropist and and inspiring what what motivates you daily to kind of keep going in, in, in that hustle and that drive? I think it's something that's definitely embedded within me. Right. Um, you know, because like I said, I'm just an entrepreneur. So my mind is always going like, what more can I do? Um, I like to be successful pretty much in any area that I enter. I mean, of right. course, you, you get a lot of no's, you get a lot of disappointments along the way, but I just keep going because I'm so passionate. Right. And you think about my dad, Muhammad right. Ali, and how he literally changed the world by just Facts. taking a stance and standing up for what he believed in and you know, those are big shoes to fill. Facts. And I've never really tried, even through my boxing career, to be like him. Right. You know, I have my own style, and but I still have that embedded in me. Like, if we're going to be here, what can we do? What con contribution can we make? Right. And for me, you know, I, I think about health and wellness and how heart disease is the biggest killer. Facts. I mean, the largest killer. Okay, and I'm talking about, yeah, yeah we're getting shot. We're yeah. getting all, I mean, we just had a school shooting today. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Let me not say that because this is not, state. Yeah, that's no, fine. Okay, fine, but, yeah. um, you know, we got so much going on in the world, but people are dying because of their lifestyle choices. So I'm trying right. to help them make better choices. Nah, and, and indeed, and, and to be that inspiration and, and to know, like, even you speak of your father just leading the charge uh, for, for so many. Uh, and I know, like, having been inspired by not only his accomplishments and, and his words. I mean, daily you always see a Muhammad Ali quote or or you see like a clip of something that he said and it always seemed like it was so charismatic and so off the cuff to you personally to, to hear that, you know, and that for that to be your father and probably, we you probably heard so many gems oh, yeah. that, that we didn't get a chance to hear. What's like one of the most memorable things that you say that he put on your spirit that you try to live daily you know what there's so many things but definitely never stepping on others to get ahead mm. we see it so often yeah a lot of time you know people say that's that. interesting to come from uh 
a, a boxer or yeah, someone. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, it's like you have to put it in context. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're in the ring with me, I'm trying to knock you out. Because <laughs> right. we uh, both understand that's what we're here to do. Right. right. And I have got to be the winner. So right. that's just how it was. But I'm talking about, you know, we, we hear it in so many different ways. You know, you don't have to dim someone else's light to shine and all right, these right. things. But people feel like everyone's their competition and sometimes they got to put other people down it's right. like no what you need to do is you need to focus on you and being the best you and try to uplift as many others as you can because once you understand that what is for you is for you nobody right. can take that away then you kind of have faith in that and you're able to be the best version of you but if you're sitting here worried about what everybody else is doing worried about who's trying to take what from you you're not putting enough energy into being your best yeah well speaking of being the best in 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 competition uh from your, your fight game to even just your lifestyle, you're a competitive person. <laughs> uh, and it seems like, it's funny, like I remember on The Masked Singer, one of the things you're like, yo, I'm used to winning. Yes, <laughs> I was so hurt. So I did The Masked Singer because, you know, it's great to be retired from, you know, being an athlete because I can kind of do the things that are fun, that right. make me happy. And I've always liked to sing, but I'm not a great singer. Right. So when I when I competed and then I realized, dang, you don't know who you're going up against. Yeah. You don't know what their skill level is going to be. And I was like, man, they put me up against professionals. I can tell <laughs> by them singing. You right. Know? So. I totally didn't think I was going to win, right. but I did think I was going to go at least three or four shows. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was like, there's got to be some other people in there who who aren't professionals, <laughs> you know? But man, they put me up hard. I was like, oh, well, but you know... It, but it was a least, great experience, though. It like, was so fun. It was so fun. How did you pick the panda, too? Like you know, that, because I'm a, I'm a strategist. Yeah, and yeah. I thought to myself, I want to be um, a lovable, likable character. Right. I want to definitely not wear a bodysuit or something where you can see my shape. Because yeah. I felt like that would be a giveaway because I'm just strong and muscular and tall. Right, and, right. You know, people would just know. So I said I wanted to put on the fat suit right. you know, and kind of just be in it. So, But it was, but that was tough. I mean, yeah. it was hot. It, it yeah, was I can imagine. I didn't, I didn't know how to project my voice. I'm not a pro. So yeah. it's like hard having because the, the mic was about this far from my mouth. Right, right. So you could hardly hear me. You right. Know, it's strong enough, but yeah. you know you could say shoulda, woulda, coulda. <laughs> but hey, it was it was all fun. It's all in fun. That's well, we great. appreciate you doing the show. Yeah. And you had uh, a lot of fun indeed. And getting back to to boxing, like you said, you retired in, in 2007. But I feel like we're in interesting times right now. With you know, it's it's a a, a shift in in the paradigm and the the women's empowerment movement is stronger than ever. And for you to dominate in your sport and then even in a sport that's considered mostly male and you kind of came along during a time where people weren't, you didn't see many female fighters. Uh, and now knowing that everybody is, you know, we see it in the UFC, we see it in, in even in, in wrestling, but knowing that the, the spirit of like, women are dominating right now. Do you feel like you kind of set the, the, the path or even kind of spark the flame? And, and when you see like just that paradigm shift that's going on currently today? I think it's a great time for women, um, you know, for women feeling like they can speak up and they can do whatever it is they want to do. Right. I've always been that way. Right. Um, and, you know, it's great to have been able to be a part of, you know, the impact that's helped change, you know, but I definitely um, – I know I contributed, but I'm not like, hey, that's because of me. You right. know what I mean? But you so, are definitely an inspiration for oh, so for many. Sure, for sure, for so many. I mean, because women's boxing, even though there were so many females before me, they didn't have any exposure. So when right. the name Ali got into the mix, it brought on a lot of attention, but it still was ahead of my time. There was no social media. Yeah. Can you imagine how much bigger I, I could have gotten as yeah. far as in bringing more awareness and even in my career, how much more money I could have made, more deals I could have had if yeah. there was more access like we have now. Right. But back then, you know, I didn't I didn't have it. So I'm glad to see that these girls now have more opportunities. Absolutely. There'll never be another Layla Ali. Never. But, there's only one. You know, hey, <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> but there's so many other lanes. My lane is closed. Right, right. But there's so many other so lanes many that others. you take. Yes. <laughs> so what's next for Layla Ali? What's what's in that lane? What can we see next? I mean, you, you've conquered television, you, you conquered <laughs> cooking, you got your spices. What are, what are we going to see? I'm like you, Nick. You know, you've, been, you've been at this Something. for a long time, Facts. you know, and you've continued to get better and better and, Thank you know, you. different opportunities come up 
and you know I assess them as I go along but I will definitely continue building out I have a nutrition line I have my spice blends um, you know the whole Layla Ali lifestyle brand I'm building um, so we'll see but I mean I'm gonna continue doing shows because we need that platform yeah you know but I'm a mom too. yeah I'm very, very I was gonna ask you about yeah. that too like the balance between career and family I, like where where does that come into play because even someone like myself we talk about you know how how much I grind and stuff and I feel like even as a parent as much as that's a priority if I was a mom I wouldn't be able to do everything yeah, that wouldn't. I'm doing because the the moms are so much more needed in, in bringing up a child so Absolutely. I'm pretty sure like the that has to at some time you're like all right I gotta put the career on hold because I gotta rock rock with the kids for a while for sure well my husband Curtis Conway um, is amazing and he's very hands-on so we we have a good balance there but you're right as mom everybody and I still cook dinner you know oh, five wow. nights a week with the spices because it's a priority for me, <laughs> right, you know right. what I mean so but something has to give like yeah. you know I'm cutting business off at a certain time certain things don't get done ideas that I have move slower I have to put them on the back burner yeah you know, I've had ideas for a few years I just haven't been able to start because you can't spread yourself too thin right so it definitely is a balance it's an ongoing balance people I, I do a lot of public speaking and that's one of the things things I talk about all the time because women want to know because now right. women are stepping up they're doing more business they're CEOs they're bosses indeed but then a lot of times they feel like they can't be a wife and a mother or you know what I mean so it's it has really to be about, an interesting balance yeah it's about finding it's all about finding that balance and right. there's tips and tools but it's it's a challenge I'm it's telling a challenge you, for everybody yes, there's, there's no cheat sure. code and no. how to how to be a mom and a, a dominant mogul all at the same I'm time sleepy. I'm yeah, sleepy I can you imagine you look like you might be too absolutely but we just keep going just right keep I can see it in your eyes but you just keep going absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're truly an inspiration. Uh, I appreciate you coming in and, and sharing that shit, bringing me some spices, but also uh, telling me all about uh, homemade simple. And then we had fun on the mass Singer, but I can't let you go. You asked about the bulletproof vest. Yes. What's going on? That's because I'll be shooting from the hip. I got it's called the firing squad. I got these questions that I always riddle off to everybody. Oh, A lot of them are psychological questions, but I feel like you'll be able to no, handle these. No trivia. I'm not, not nah, trivia. never that. Okay, Just really okay. about, okay. about okay. self. All right. uh, like the first one, I always ask everyone. They always say there's only really two emotions. That's uh, love and fear and all the other emotions kind of derive from those spaces. What would Layla Ali rather be Loved or feared? Loved. Really? Mm -hmm. Even in the ring? <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't really matter in the ring because no matter how you feel against me, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that applies there too. But then, but loved all the way around. Definitely loved. Hey. Love is more, is, love is definitely more important to me. I don't want people to fear me. In fact, I have still problems with people fearing me or being intimidated by right. me or whatever just because of my presence and my energy or the right. fact that I was a fighter or that I'm serious. Yeah. You know? But, you know, so I'm still trying to work out of that. Like, I'm not trying to beat you up. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You can relax around. <laughs> you don't relax. have to be scared. Right. Of so, okay, speaking of fears and being scared, what's Layla Ali's greatest fear? Not trying. Mm. Um, feeling like I didn't uh, do my absolute best. Um, okay. You know, that would be something. Because I'm a little OCD, I would never let that go. Like, if, if, if I didn't attain something or failed and feel like it's because I didn't try, that would kill me. But if I feel like I did my best, so, you know, so be it. Yeah. Then I'm good. I can sleep at night. Easy. So, lighten it up. Favorite movie of all time? <sighs> Favorite movie of all time? Hmm. Coming to America. Right? I love that movie. I could watch it over and over. Over and over again. <laughs> they making a new one. I, they, they, I heard it's good, too. So. Coming to America? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They that's got, great. They got a part two that they actually filming as we speak. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, God. Well, one of them, you know, I usually have the never step on others to get ahead, but yeah. I told you that Yeah, earlier. that's still good. You can okay, use that. okay, I can use that. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Worst piece of advice you've ever seen. Worst piece of advice? Hmm, I don't listen a lot of times to many people, but I'm sure I've gotten some bad advice. Um, it would probably be in boxing. I remember my boxing career, I, I had, I'm not going to say any names, but I had <laughs> certain trainers right. that would try to – change up your style right and i remember thinking no i don't want to do that because that's not really my thing but this is somebody who was a world champion and trained other world champions so you listen to them and you try it and you, you get cracked upside the head a couple times right when you were like okay that would not have happened before right, right, so, right. yeah bad advice definitely but not you know that's what happens though when you have a trainer you have to trust them you gotta yeah. try things and then yeah so in the ring Layla lee's last meal what is it last meal what did i have for dinner last night because i haven't eaten today 
Um, oh, I made a pasta with quinoa pasta, some ground turkey. It was kind of like a hamburger helper, right. but a healthier homemade version. For are you uh, so? Are you on the the plant based vibe? No, not no. at all. So I am highly plant based, but I do. I'm a meat eater, so like I'll put like fifty percent plant. Okay. And you know, 40% raw on okay. my plate. But I definitely eat, like, high-quality, non-GMO, grass-fed, you know, all that stuff, right. meat, so, and less of it. Got it, got it, the organic rock. Exactly. All right, you're on an island, you only could take three things. What are those three <laughs> oh, things you're man. taking? Oh, man. <laughs> three things? Yeah. My husband, my daughter, and my son. <laughs> there it is. That sounds like a, <laughs> sound like a vacation. All it's right. never a vacation with the kids. <laughs> for them it is, but for me it's not. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. All right. Um, most prized possession. Oh, man. Those are some hard questions. <laughs> most prized possession. Because most things that I possess are not that important to me. Right. Um. And it could be, you know, it could be esoteric. It could be, uh, yeah. yeah, it could be an item that it could be your joy. Or, you know, I that. mean, I think it would definitely be um, just all of the media, photo albums, videos I have of my kids, mm. you know, um, and then just having the video of, of them with my father Yo, because wow. I know how important that's going to be when they get older to yeah, actually see their absolutely. interaction with him and the conversations they've had with him as they get older and start to forget him and yeah. you, know, you feel bad about that yeah. when forgetting someone but they were so young when he passed yeah. so just having all that footage is amazing even the footage and videos I have of my father when he was talking yeah. and the conversations he used to always record us oh wow he used to record us and, and ask us questions and all that and just because he, he, he said you're going to love listening to this when you get older which you do yeah so so all of that stuff, I think that media for sure. It's so amazing that we have more of that now too, because we have more media, more access mm -hmm. to it. Because even like, like you said, I have like pictures with you know my my grandfather passed, but like having my youngest with my grandfather mm -hmm. and seeing all of that is mm -hmm. is, is is really dope. Um, Layla Ali's favorite quote from anyone like that that you often recite. I don't really say quotes that much. Really? No, I not even on yourself. You don't quote yourself. I mean, we. Something you always say, a, a motto that you live by? Well, I'll say that I, I find myself saying this to friends a lot, is that you made your bed, now you got to lay in it. Mm, that's because, one of them real ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, now that you said that, I do say that a lot because, you know, you, you consult with people, they confide in you, they make decisions, you give them advice, but ultimately they have to make their own decision and they might come back to you three years later like, oh man, this is going like this and that's going like that. And then I'm like, look, <laughs> you yeah. made your bed. Yeah, like, you remember lie. when we talked about this right. and you decided to go that route, yep. but it just is what it is, you know? And it's like some things just can't be undone. Now you got to just live. That's what you have to think about when you're yeah. making decisions though. Is this something I'm going to be able to live with? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, your legacy, your life is all the decisions that you made yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis and what kind of unfolded and manifested from that. So Indeed. You got one album you could listen to for the rest of your life. Only one album. What's that album? Oh, God. Um, Jill Scott. Mm. Her first one. The first album. one, right? Yep. <laughs> her first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That joint is fire. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite curse word? Motherfucker. <laughs> that's such a powerful Did word. That, do you like that word? I love, that's my I mean, favorite. I say that on a <laughs> that, regular basis. That is Obviously definitely. not publicly because yeah, I have an image to yeah, maintain. Yeah, but that is that one. All you my say friends, it in your mind. Yes, this, that's just my, and then my, like my people go, there it is today. Now the day is complete <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> Got it all out in, indeed. All right, so I, I can't believe you chose the same one that I choose. Uh, worst job you've ever had? McDonald's. Really? You worked at McDonald's? Oh, yeah. Well, on the fries? I worked at the fries. I worked the the register. Really? I, so when I was 15, I visited my father for summer. And like I said, I've always been, well, I didn't say this, but I've always been independent. I've always been ambitious. And I remember being 15 and saying, I want a job. I want to start making money. So we were all visiting because there's nine of us. Right. And I'm the youngest girl. And I decided to get the job at the local McDonald's and worked. So. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, that's, that would be the worst. Yeah, sure. I've definitely done the fast food grind. It's, when they make you clean the bathrooms, that's when I right, quit. Right, right. I was like, I'm good. Um, all right, a genie comes out of the magic lamp, but only gives you one wish. What is that wish? God. You only get one, not three. One to have more wishes. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says that. Okay, okay, then I gotta come up with something. <laughs> um, one wish. Uh, to make, um, pain 
for children go away. So whether that be um, child sex trafficking, abuse from parents, bullying, hunger, just to put a safe, yeah, hunger, to make put a bubble around the children. Because I lay up at night sometimes and think about things that affect me. So you know, this happening to kids. Yeah, they don't ask to be here and they can't fight for themselves. So they it really bothers me deeply when I see alleviating pain from children. children, That's such a powerful wish right there. All right, you, you threw me with that one. Uh, usually yeah. people make it about themselves. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, Layla Lee's guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure? Probably um, glazed donuts, <laughs> peach cobbler a la mode, mm. you know, things like that um, for sure. Right, right. And you talked about legacy earlier, and you, you uh, obviously you come from such an amazing legacy. One word. That describes Layla Ali. When it's all said and done, I want to be remembered as. Dang. Um, that's hard. Just one word. One word. One I word. Mean, come on. <laughs> I mean. Uh, um, I would just say. If I have to choose one word, authentic. Mm, there it is. And that's, this has been a, a, a very powerful conversation uh, with the authentic Miss <laughs> Layla Ali. Thank you for your time. Thank Much you. continued success. It's Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106.